Hey guys, Comic Boom here to talk about Wonder Woman issue 41. It looks like writer James Robinson is starting to put more players on the chessboard in a very intricate story that he is weaving. Let's check it out. Yeah, 41. Wow. Uh, this is generally when I first... At first reading this uh, issue, I was surprised at how uh, slow it was in terms of not much really happened. But then when I, when I actually, uh, when I thought about it, it became increasingly clear that James Robinson is really starting to put more pieces on the on the on the chessboard here of this narrative. This is evolving into a very complex tale, and you know, just a, I had to write this down to summarize it. These are all the players so far that we've had in James Robinson's tale. I gotta give James Robinson credit because he's taking pieces from Greg Rucka's Rebirth Wonder Woman run, that first 25 issues, and he's really using bits and pieces from that and he's really building on that narrative. And in particular, he introduces in this, uh, in this issue Veronica Kale, and uh, it's funny because I was talking about the, her last issue that I, re I was really, uh, she was a villain that I could respect because I think that Wonder Woman actually owes Veronica Kale uh, a debt, uh, that Wonder Woman is too much. For whatever reason, Wonder Woman is a bitch to Veronica Kale, despite the fact that it really is Wonder Woman's fault and the Amazon's fault in many ways that uh, Veronica Kale's daughter was lost to Themyscira. And anyone who's read Rebirth knows that. And Veronica Kale is a bitch. Don't get me wrong. And she's she's a narcissistic, uh, control freak, uh, uh, sort of a a more complex, even a more complex Lex Luthor type. But it, she, n nonetheless, her motivations and her love for her daughter uh, are are very very clear. But in any event, so far, just I want to I just want to give a quick synopsis. Of, uh, I'll try to keep give a quick synopsis of what James Robinson has built so far, leading into issue 41. We've got a villain. We've got. A, it starts off. We thought this was just going to touch upon who is Jason, Wonder Woman's brother, but it's much, much more complex than that. We are introduced to Jason. Jason disappeared last issue. We we discovered that Jason w was like Wonder Woman, uh, an offspring of Zeus. That that dark side, dark side here was killing off all of Zeus's children in order to get his energies back to grow from a baby into a teenager. And that's what he did. He did that with the help of Grail, flowing out of Dark Side War. He ends up killing Zeus, which brings him from teenage from teenagehood into adulthood. He also has a base in the Amazon jungle, where Dark Side is acquiring various artifacts from around the globe, relics as he calls them, in order to create what we discover is a portal into Themyscira. He wants to he wants to take over Themyscira. He's got some plans that involve the Amazons. And that's very, very interesting. He doesn't care about Earth. He wants to get to Paradise Island. He wants to get to Themyscira. So there's something on Themyscira that he wants. And what could that be that hasn't been revealed yet? One would imagine it's got something to do with the Amazons, but what's interesting is that we know from Greg Rucka's run that Themyscira is cut off from the rest of the world. No, no, even Wonder Woman can't really access uh, Themyscira anymore. That's part, that's the price she paid in that. That's the price that the Amazons pay in sort of uh, keeping Ares sort of locked away in uh, in his in his other realm there. So the Amazons, in many ways, are sort of the gatekeepers of keeping the deem the sons of Ares, the, uh, uh, Phobos and Deimos at bay and in any event that's also where Veronica Kale's daughter is basically trapped in because Phobos and Deimos and Greg Rucka's run they uh, they cursed Veronica Kale's daughter as a way to blackmail Veronica Kale to help uh, and blackmail Veronica Kale by saying Veronica Kale you're gonna help us find the mascara so we can free our father Ares well again long story short they were successful in locating the mascara with Veronica Kale's help, and Wonder Woman knew that Veronica Kale was being blackmailed, essentially extorted to using her vast billionaire resources to 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 make life miserable for Wonder Woman, all with the goal, uh, because she's being blackmailed by Phobos and Deimos, the sons, the sons of Ares, in order to locate their father and free their father. Of course, what Phobos and Deimos didn't realize is when they got the mascara, through the help of uh, Veronica Kale. 
that uh, Ares didn't want to be released and that he had turned a new leaf and ultimately they were defeated by Wonder Woman's magic lasso and uh, but unfortunately for Veronica Kale's daughter Izzy Izzy was cursed she's still the only way that Izzy could actually survive she wouldn't survive coming back to man's world they they couldn't undo the magics that kept her there so she's forever sort of tra uh, trapped on Themyscira but Izzy will like Themyscira she'll be raised by Amazons and she'll be raised in the Amazon way meanwhile though Veronica Kale is without her daughter she had to return with Wonder Woman so she returns back to our plane of existence a bitter a uh, billionaire woman who doesn't like Wonder Woman very much and holds a lot of resentment. Meanwhile, <laughs> what else do we have? And this is all being built up by James Robinson. We got Silver Swan, who last issue was defeated and is now being looked after by who, who we know to be really Dr. Psycho. Uh, Zeus was dead. Uh, Darkseid is still trying to orchestrate uh, his... Uh, orchestrate his minions to get as many relics as possible to locate the mascara, as I've already mentioned. And we are introduced to three other villains here. In this issue, it, it, it appears that Wonder Woman is being distracted by three villains, which she believes were all, our, and out of all these three villains, these three new villains are Crimson Flame, the Blue Snowman, and Anglet. <laughs> Crimson Flame has the power, has pyrokinetic power to uh, basically shoot uh, oh, well, Crimson Flames out of her hands. There's the Blue Snowman, uh, who is a tech-based villain that controls temperature and moisture so that whenever uh, this villain uses uh, her powers it shoots out what looks like blue snow so they call her the blue snowman and then there's a woman by the name of Berna Brilliant how's that for a name? Berna or Bi Bina or Berna Brilliant <laughs> otherwise known as uh, uh, well, I think Berna Brilliant is the Blue Snowman, I believe. And then there's Anglet, who has the power to create spatial porters and time breaks. In any event, all three of these new villains are all, were all women, and they're all being manipulated by Veronica Kale, who is ordering, who basically directed them to invade the state capital in, in order to keep Wonder Woman busy. Now, why would she do that? That wasn't revealed, this issue, but I strongly suspect that what's happening here is that Darkseid is working with Veronica Kale. Veronica Kale has never really forgiven Wonder Woman for the fact that she blames it uh, the loss of her daughter to, to Themyscira in Greg Rocca's run. I believe that she blames Wonder Woman for that. And I believe that she's working with Darkseid so that she wants to distract Wonder Woman, keep Wonder Woman from looking for Darkseid by uh, having these f fabricated little incidences that keep Wonder Woman busy. And as long as Wonder Woman's not looking for Darkseid, Darkseid has more time to find uh, and and orchestrate a way into Themyscira. Uh, and I believe that the, that, that the agreement that Darkseid likely has with Veronica Kale is that if you help me find Themyscira, because you, you found it once, Miss Kale, you help me find it again, and I'll, I'll, I'll ensure that when I get in there, I'll find a way to get your daughter back to you, and that'll be the bargain. Uh, so, now that hasn't been revealed here, but I suspect that, that Veronica Kale and Darkseid have got an agreement in that respect. And so Veronica Kale, Veronica Kale, by the way, she would not be afraid to, to deal with the devil like Darkseid. Veronica Kale uh, went years being blackmailed and having to deal with uh, uh, Themos and Demos, who were the twin sons uh, of, of Ares. So she's used to dealing with very evil people. Now Darkseid is probably at the top of the heap, but Veronica Kale's no pushover, and uh, she wouldn't be afraid to make a deal with, um, with Darkseid. In any event, this this thing is really taken off quite well, and um, one of the one of the uh, sm the quieter moments in this issue, James Robinson took a lot of time. Uh, the issue essentially has been criticized in some quarters for being slow going, in that it's basically Wonder Woman talking to Steve Trevor in an airport hangar, talking about her day, and she talks about her adventures. She talks about how her day was taking on these three villains that I mentioned, Crimson Flame, Blue Snowman, and the Anglet. And she really, she talks about it. And it, they only give vignette images of what actually took place. And in some people's minds, you could perhaps criticize that and say, well, you know, James Robinson, you should, you should really show it, have the artist show it as opposed to just tell it through it, tell it in the words of, the, of Wonder Woman. But I, I think it's important that, I think he did it because he wants to establish something here. And, and I believe he succeeded on two ways. Number one, he established, he, he made it clear that uh, just like 
I believe those were distractions. Wonder Woman saw through it. She knew that Veronica Kale was distracting her with the, that. That She saw through that. She's not sure why. She doesn't sure what Veronica Kale's up to. She suspects that at a, at a minimum, Veronica Kale is just creating those distractions, creating a, uh, some terror in the state capital so that the state capital will be more inclined to buy more weapons from Veronica Kale's uh, defense companies. Uh, but that's a little bit too simplistic. But the other thing it did establish, it, it, it allowed us to get into the head and into the relationship between Steve Trevor and Diana. And it, it's quite clear that Diana and Steve Trevor, Diana doesn't really open up very much to Steve Trevor. It, it's very, very interesting that Wonder Woman, who seemed to be so open during Greg Rocca's run, uh, is not very open here. She, uh, this is a woman who will supplicate herself in front of the twins god, twin god of Ares and uh, try to win over and supplicate her, supplicate in front of her greatest enemies and win them over with love and compassion. But she's, for some reason, she's closed off when it comes to her personal relationship with Steve Trevor. And she even uh, it was quite resentful of Steve Trevor sort of pushing the buttons and asking her and trying to get into her head in terms of what's bothering her. And it's very obvious what's bothering her. Wonder Woman knows that something's going on. She can't get her hands on it. She can't locate. She looked through the Amazon jungle. She couldn't locate Dark, uh, Dark Side's uh, headquarters. Uh, she was distracted by the villains. She Veronica Kale is up to something. She's not sure what it is. She just defeated Silver Swan. Uh, the the issue before, uh, Jason has disappeared. She doesn't know where Jason, her brother, is. So she's got a lot of reasons to be worried. She's stressed out. She's filled with anxiety. And what I noticed interestingly here is, uh, and I don't know if this was just a mistake of the artist, but Wonder Woman doesn't have her magic lasso through much of this issue. She uses it when she battles uh, the three villains I talked about. But when she's with Steve Trevor, uh, she doesn't appear... Well, it's interesting. I guess there was an artistic error. On some of these, on most of these scenes, I can't see the magic... She, I can't see the la lasso. Now, why would I mention that? I mention that because in issue 25, Greg Rucker wrote a tale that I think... I think he screwed up on. I don't think he intended it to be interpreted this way, but that's the way it can only be interpreted. And that is Wonder Woman is a bitch without her magic lasso. Without, if, if Wonder Woman goes an extended period of time without her magic lasso, she becomes a bitch. She becomes a moody bitch. And when she gets her lasso back, she just seems to be nicer. Now, that might not have been Rucka's intention, but that was clearly the implication in, uh, in his last issue uh, called, uh, I think it was called Perfect. Uh, now, that was issue 25. But in any event, uh, I find it interesting that Wonder Woman, even if she does have the last or not, uh, it just seems to me that her, she's getting, she's very moody and she's getting stressed and she's not dealing with it very well. And uh, at the end of this issue, uh, she, uh, what, during her discussion with Steve Trevor, she runs into Jason. Jason appears and the great news guys for Jason is that he's no longer wearing his blue capri pants. Jason has returned. Now we don't know where Jason was. We don't know where where he is, but is but he's got a different he finally has a decent costume. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's better than the blue gay capri pants that he wore before, huh? <laughs> but he's back and Wonder Woman ends by asking what happened to you and we'll have to wait next issue to find out. But guys, we got so many so many you know, like I said before, so many pieces on this chest and there to chessboard right now. This was a slow issue. Not much happened. I know that you could probably complain about that, but I, it, we needed an issue like this to set things up. And I, I like the way it's headed. Uh, guys, James Robinson is bu building a slow, epic buildup of a tale here. And uh, he did the same thing and he wrote Earth 2. And I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. This really, it really seems to be building towards something. I and mean, I'm really curious to know how Veronica Kale... Dark Side, Dr. Psycho, Silver Swan, those three new villains, Anglet, Crimson, and the, the Crimson Flame, and Blue Snowman, if they're all going to come to play. So many moving pieces are, are, are coming into play here. This really uh, uh, purports, uh, promises to be a great, great story. So guys, ch uh, check out issue one, Wonder Woman 41. Stick with this tale. I think this is a, this is, this is going to be one of those tales where I think in the long run, it's going to be something that we will all want to, we'll look back on and say, uh, this was actually a, a, a great s slow build of a narrative. So that's it guys. I'll catch you later and comic boom out.